for showing. But I'll trim that out of the video anyway. Um, all right, so. Cool, public. Um, so I'm gonna create a class quickly. I think let's go with a, hmm. Yeah, let's go with an enemy class. We'll start setting up the example now. All right, so class enemy. Okay, this is gonna change a lot. What, what the purpose of this class is so far is for us to re-explain um, the concept of abstract and virtual. Okay, so let's say we're gonna define two enemies. Um, I'm gonna go with dragons and goblins, okay? So we're gonna have like this enemy class and two classes that inherit from it, okay? Dragon enemy and goblin enemy. And obviously they're gonna need to be slightly different, right? Um, goblins maybe throw spears, dragons obviously breathe fire or something. Okay, so um, let's think about what an enemy needs. They probably need a name, maybe, like a general name, like dragon or goblin, maybe not like a, an actual NPC name or something. And they need a way to attack. Okay, let's say they require those two things for now. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna create a name field inside, inside class enemy. Let me maybe zoom in a bit because it might be a bit tough to see. Ooh, full screen, that works better. Okay, yeah, and feel free to follow along and code yourself, but all the code will be shared with you um, when we're done. Cool, so um, I'm gonna create a, a property called name. Okay, the name is obviously gonna be a string, all right? So public string name get set. Okay, something like that. Cool. I'm also going to say that we're, we're going to create the attack method here, right? We know that already that our goblins are going to want to attack things and our dragons are going to want to attack things. So we're going to define the attack method here. Our attack method for now is going to be very simple, all right? It's just gonna be a, like a text interface. So we'll try to say like, um, hits something or um, breathes fire or something along those lines, all right? Because this is a general enemy attack, um, we're just gonna say enemy hits you or something, okay, for now. So this is just gonna say public. Um, it's gonna be a, a void. Obviously it doesn't have to return anything because it's just printing something out. It's going to be called attack. Okay, attack. And it isn't even going to take in anything at this point. And all this is going to do is it's going to print out the enemy's name and say that they're going to attack you. Okay, so console.write line. Um, cool. I'm going to, you, you maybe haven't seen this way of writing it before. You have seen another way of doing it. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to do it this way. So obviously, you know that you can print out a name, for example, like if I wanted to print out the enemy's name, I could just say name, right, like that. And you know that I could print out a normal string. For example, I could say attack, right? And, and you know those will work. Console.write line, you can put anything there and it'll print. The issue is now I want to print out name attacks you or something, all right? So how do I print out this property inside a string okay it's just a silly trick you don't really have to remember it because it won't be tested um, but how you do it is you can put like these curly brackets inside the string if you put a dollar sign before it it tells c sharp that you're doing this and then you can just say what property you want to print out okay um, so name i'm just going to be a little bit more specific and i'm going to say this dot name so saying like the current class all right again just a silly trick so this name attacks you, all right? So that's just gonna go ahead and print out whatever the enemy's name is. Obviously we haven't set that yet and it's gonna print out that they're attacking you. Okay, um, so shall we, shall we just start by testing out our enemy class before, before we do anything more crazy, all right? So I'm gonna create an enemy. So it would be like enemy, um, enemy equals new enemy. Okay, something like that. 
Um, we're going to have to set our enemy's name. So I'm just going to say enemy.name equals um, nemesis. That's what we should have called the enemy. We want to use a synonym. Okay, whatever though. All right. Nemesis. And then I'm just going to say enemy.attack. All right, now guys, nothing new here, right? We're just creating a very simple class. This is maybe a little bit new to you that you can print out something like this. Um, but but you shouldn't worry too much about that. It's pretty simple what's happening, right? It's like almost like a template. So C Sharp is just going to go in those curly brackets and it's going to read that little bit as code. All right. So um, nothing too hectic, I hope. And when I run this, hopefully if I didn't do anything wrong. Um, wait and see. It prints out Nemesis attacks you. Okay, that's a good start, right? Right, we created an enemy object. We gave our enemy the name Nemesis. When we print out, when we go enemy.attack, it goes to our little attack method and prints out Nemesis attacks you. Okay, very simple class, um, but you'll see that we're going to be able to do some pretty powerful things with a structure this simple by the end of, by the, end of the lecture. Thanks mostly to C Sharp interfaces. All right. Cool. So I'm going to go back into full screen and and now we so the whole point of this is to revise this idea of abstract and virtual and to do that hopefully you guys remember the word abstract and virtual have to do with that idea or at least as applied to methods have to do with that idea of polymorphism right and these these ideas of polymorphism and inheritance if you recall so um, let's first go into inheritance because we need a class okay that's going to inherit our attack method so if I say class dragon inherits from enemy you're okay with that right class dragon inherits from enemy um, nothing new there you've seen that done with rectangles before right we had class rectangle inherits from polygon and class square inherits from polygon this is just a slightly more interesting example than than the bookish one. Okay. Ooh, I, I don't know, is it scrolling down automatically? Yeah, guys, feel free to ask questions and stuff. We do, I think we should still make this in time um, with the amount of content we're covering. We might not be able to finish our little quiz, which is unfortunate, but um, we can always do it in next, next week. Okay, um, so we've got our class dragon. I, I just want to create a, a constructor that sets the name of dragons, okay? Um, because I don't want to have to set the dragon's name every single time. So um, we, we're going to create a constructor. What's the big rule about constructors? Let's get some interaction going. What's the main sort of two things when creating a constructor? Um, number one, what uh, level of accessibility do constructors need to have? And what's the big rule about the name of a constructor? Okay, yeah, same name as a class and, and must it be public, private, protected? What, what do we think on that? Public, fantastic. All right, so we need public dragon, All right? That's our constructor. Um, in this case, I'm not even gonna make it take anything because all dragon's names are just gonna be dragon, okay? Um, because I, it, it's just going to simplify the code a little bit. All right. Okay. Amica also says public. Great stuff. Okay. So um, it's just going to, all this is going to do is set name equal to, I mean, we could pick a more interesting dragon name than dragon. Um, let's go with Alduin. Okay. Um, that, that works out. All right. So that's our dragon's name. Um, if any of you have a better dragon name suggestion, I'll, I'll take it, but, but Alduin seems to work fine. Okay, so now instead of creating um, an enemy, enemy, we're gonna create a dragon um, enemy equals new dragon, right? Pretty basic stuff, um, nothing too scary there. And then we can also just say enemy.attack, right? And hopefully it's just going to inherit our attack method, assuming all of the um, accessibility is correct, which is a never ending problem. Um, and just say, Alduin attacks you. Okay, Alduin attacks you. 
Fantastic. Okay, so that's working as expected. All right, so we didn't have to redefine this attack method. Um, we didn't have to do anything too difficult. And we've now got sort of two enemy types, but in a way, one enemy type, right? Because dragons are real. This enemy class, ideally, maybe one day we would want to have abstract, right? We wouldn't want you to directly be able to create this. Okay, so with this structure set up, um, and hopefully we, we all understand what's going on, I, I want to introduce two words. Okay, well, you've, you've seen them before, but I want to reintroduce two words, all right? They are abstract and virtual. Okay, so hopefully you remember what, if I made the class abstract, hopefully you remember what this means. Um, can anyone describe in like a brief little chat message what it means if, if a class is abstract? Um, there's, there is quite an easy way to say it, but you, you need to be thinking about it in a certain way. You can't, ooh, 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 ooh. So you're, you're thinking along the correct track, but the word you're thinking about is sealed, right? So sealed means you can't be, can't inherit. Okay. Um, abstract means, as, as Maya says, um, you can only inherit from the class. Okay, yeah, borrow from this class, that's, that's cool too. Derive from this class, however you want to think about it, yeah. Um, that's what it means. It means that I could no longer, if you remember early on when I created like enemy, enemy equals new enemy. Oh, well, I couldn't call it enemy now anyway, because um, that name's taken. But I, this, this line here where I go enemy n equals new enemy, this would not be allowed, okay, because it's now abstract. So I'm not allowed to create an object directly, all right? So you can, it means that you're no longer allowed to create objects directly, you're no longer allowed to create instances of the class, but you can still inherit from it, okay? So if it's abstract, it means you can only inherit from it, okay? Um, so hopefully we remember what abstract means as applied to a class. What we, we have seen it before because we covered polymorphism, um, but we, we haven't explored as much what abstract means when you apply it to a method. Okay, so I've got abstract class enemy. Okay, we know that means you can only inherit from, from the enemy class. If I say public abstract void attack, what what errors will occur now so i'm going to run this it is going to give us an error but the error is hopefully quite explanatory as well right so let's run this see what it tells us okay so it says enemy dot attack cannot declare a body because it is marked abstract okay enemy dot attack cannot declare a body because it is marked abstract and we're also told another error Dragon does not implement inherited abstract member enemy.attack. Okay, so both of those are a little bit of a mouthful as, as all of these programming errors usually are. Um, but let's think about what they mean in, in terms of the code. Okay, so we were told that enemy.attack cannot implement a body because it is abstract. Okay, so we added that little word abstract and now C-sharp told us that attack cannot implement a body, all right? Maybe that already makes sense to you what um, cannot implement a body means, but um, for those of you who don't quite get it, this, this, this little bit that's currently highlighted from that curly bracket to this curly bracket, that is the body that this method is implementing, okay? So when a method is abstract, what it means is that you are not allowed to create that body, okay? You are not allowed to implement that body, okay? So um, you, you have to remove the body. And we were also told that Dragon does not implement the abstract member that it is inheriting. So basically what abstract means is saying, look, enemies attack. Okay, that's what this abstract thing is saying. Enemies attack. I don't know how they attack. All right, but you have to tell C-sharp how they attack. 
So basically it's saying you have to define this method inside any class that inherits from enemy. All right, that's what attack is saying. So um, here we have to say public void attack. Okay, and we have to define the attack method for our dragon. Because it's defined as abstract here, you have to define it in full here. Okay, now there's hmm, one other word because C Sharp doesn't quite get it just automatically. Okay, you have to say override. Okay, what the override means, you, there is another word you can use, but this is specifying it in one way. Okay, so um, you, you have to um, tell it that this method is not like a new method. It's not something that only exists for dragons. It's something that exists for any enemy. And what you're specifying here is an override of, of the one that exists in enemy. Okay, even though it does exist in enemy in an abstract sense. And here you're saying like, I'm overriding that abstract sense with this real, with this real implementation. Okay, and now we can say how dragons attack. Okay, so like, um, it, it will be pretty much the same. It's just going to be like, um, so we put, throw down our little dollar signs to tell it that, tell C sharp that we're doing this. It'll be name breathes fire at you. Okay, I guess there should be an exclamation point at the end there. Um, that gives it more effect, right? It's we're trying to be dramatic. Okay, so this should say Alduin breathes fire at you. Wait, we do actually call enemy.attack, right? Yes. Okay, assuming everything works out. Exactly. Cool. So it goes Alduin breathes fire at you. Cool. And now if, um, if we created a goblin class, right? Like class um, goblin inherits from enemy. Okay. Um, again, all it's going to say is, all right, fine, you can do this, but you have to tell the goblin how to attack. Okay. You don't have to redefine name or anything, um, but you do need to tell the goblin how to attack. You need to provide an implementation for this abstract, abstract thing that you inherited. Okay. So that's what abstract means. And if you understand that, then, um, if I change this to virtual, actually you're still going to understand okay because all this means is exactly the same you you um you have to provide or you can provide an implementation inside dragon but you can also provide an implementation inside enemy okay so what virtual is saying if if you didn't specify anything then you can provide a body here like console.write line um Sorry about that. Uh, name attacks you. Okay. So if you if you don't specify virtual, you can do this, but you're not allowed to override the method. Okay. If you say abstract, then you're not allowed to define a body, right? If you say virtual, you are allowed to define a body, and you are allowed to override it. So I know it's a lot of words, but it's, you can see none of them are conceptually difficult, right? It's literally just, you have to be ridiculously specific when working with computers or then they just go crazy. Okay. So, um, yeah, virtual and override. Okay. So, so virtual allows you to define a body and allows you to override abstract. You're not allowed to define a body. So you have to override, okay? Um, and if you don't specify anything, then it's just a normal method, okay? So you're not allowed to override it. All right, so it's just a bunch of silly words basically, but you have to be ridiculously specific. And there is a reason why um, I wanted to go through this with you guys one more time, um, just to make sure that you you remember. Okay. Um, do I want to ex okay we'll we'll cover that later actually all right so um, is is everyone comfortable with this idea of abstract and virtual do you get the difference or at least somewhat 
And actually what's more important is that you understand what abstract is doing. Um, right now, I don't particularly care about virtual. Do you understand what abstract is doing? Does anyone have questions about abstract? With like virtual, we can, um, we can revise um, it when we do some questions or something. But, but particularly for interfaces, I want you to get abstract. What's up? Um, so I'm just asking, uh, this is not probably a stupid question, but uh, what's the body? What's the body? Oh, yeah. okay. The, the body is what it means, what C sharp means by body is literally just the things between the curly brackets. Okay, that's the body of your method, the, the main implementation of your method. Okay. All right. So like the, the body of our of this attack method is this console dot right line name breathes fire at you. OK, the um, and the body of this attack method is name attacks you. OK, the body of our main method is just all the stuff defined here. OK, so it's literally just the code inside your method. OK, but no, that was that's a good question if you're um, cool. But yeah, so. Hopefully, yeah, you get the difference between abstract. So abstract, you're just not allowed to define this body. This is not allowed to be here. And you have to override. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll look at some other ways of doing this later. But for now, um, yeah, just know that abstract means that your method cannot provide an implementation. Okay. It cannot have a body. Um, so only methods that inherit define that body. Okay, um, I, I know maybe we rushed through that a bit, but if you understand this concept of abstract, you'll find it very easy to adjust to the next idea that we're covering. Okay, cool. So hopefully you guys are comfortable with that. If you're not, please ask questions. Okay. Um, awesome. I don't, I think, yeah, I think we can go on. All right, so interfaces are sort of the culmination of, of all of this, all of this work we've put into understanding object oriented programming. Okay, and you're going to see why now why they're so cool um, and why they make things so easy. All right, so I'm going to go through interfaces mainly in terms of an example again, because I think that's a better way of seeing it. Um, especially when it's an example more interesting than rectangles and squares, which I hope this one will be. Um, so the reason I re-explained the word abstract is because one way of seeing an interface is that it is a class where everything is abstract. Okay, so it is literally just, this is a class, but everything is just assumed to be both public and abstract. So it's accessible anywhere and nothing provides any implementations. Okay, so it's basically defining a template almost. Okay. Cool, so um, maybe you can picture it that way. If you can't, if you can't um, it'll be maybe easier to follow through with the example. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create two interfaces, all right, in the hopes of us seeing how these interfaces interact with each other. Okay, and why they're called interfaces. Okay, the reason they're called interfaces, you know what it means to interface with something. It's like to interact with it, right? To interact with it in some way. Um, and usually you would expect an interface to define a particular way to interact with something, right? Maybe even you would say it defines an abstract way. Okay, but let's not get into that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create, so our first interface will be called I weapon. If you, if you, um, this is the standard way of naming an interface, by the way, is you give it whatever name you want. Um, sometimes it's a verb or something, um, but, but we're just going to say weapon for now. And you just put an I in front of it, I for interface. Okay. Um, probably where the inspiration for naming all these Apple products came from, right? Like the iPhone and the iPad and all of that stuff. Okay, so we're going to create iWeapon, all right? And we're going to say two things are going to inherit from iWeapon, all right? We're going to have bow iWeapons and we're going to have um, sword iWeapons, all right? Um, so iWeapons are just going to define 
a general abstract thing structure for what a weapon needs to be okay you're using rex texture but what's the other one that we use used to use called um it's called dot net fiddle yeah sorry i switched to rex tester because i think it's easier to read when i have it full screen um dot net fiddle dot net i think it was something like that um but if you just type dot net fiddle c sharp into google it'll come up um but, and then also the big thing about rex tester is the code wall so i'm able to share the code when we're done um, but yeah, I also like .NET Fiddle, although the adverts are a bit annoying. Okay, so we have iWeapon, okay, bow iWeapon and sword iWeapon. All right, so iWeapon is going to define this abstract idea, idea of what a weapon should be. Now, I, I do want you to recall, you know how you do this with classes, right? You could define an abstract class that represents a weapon, right? Like it might, you might have a name for your weapon, um, the amounts of damage it does how it attacks things right like does it slice or shoot or whatever right you can do that in a class you guys know how to do that in a class okay the reason why we would use an interface for this is because it just saves us some typing basically because if you were doing with that if you were doing that in a class you would make everything abstract and you would make everything public okay so the interface just does that for you if you say it's an interface it is just going to make everything public and everything abstract Okay. But again, if you're, if you're not comfortable with the idea of abstract yet, then just focus on the example instead. Okay, so we're going to define this weapon idea, and we're going to have bows and swords as our weapons. All right. We're also going to define an I enemy, okay, an interface for enemies. All right. And they're just going to say um, our enemies are going to be very simple. Okay, we're just going to give them a name for now. Obviously, eventually you would want them to have like hit points, maybe like a size. Um, you know, you would want to go really complicated if you were trying to make a real game, even a text based game. Um, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. Our enemies are just going to have a name, basically. Right. Maybe we'll explore some other ideas with giving them hit points at the at the end of the lecture. OK. And likewise, we're just going to have two enemies. Right. Dragon eye enemy and goblin eye enemy all right cool now why is this structure so clever so without interfaces or i mean you could do it with classes but let's not think about that but without interfaces how you might go about this is you would say okay bows can shoot dragons and bows can and swords can hit dragons and bows can shoot goblins and swords can hit goblins right so you would be defining like four whole relationships right which is pretty complicated to do like this is a lot of code to be writing right we would have to have two methods in bow one for shooting dragons and one for shooting goblins we would need a method in sword for hitting dragons and another method in sword for hitting goblins okay but by creating an interface we can just say, oh, weapons can hit enemies. Okay. And we just define this general way for weapons to hit enemies. Okay. So what the interface is doing is saying, that what the iWeapon inter interface states is that if you implement me, if you inherit from me, if you are an iWeapon, so bows and swords are iWeapons, you must provide a way to attack any I enemy. Okay, so that's what our I weapon class is going to say, which will give us this really, and you'll see, it's like this really powerful, interesting way to easily define a structure like this. Okay, to have like really complicated objects that can take on so many different forms interacting with each other in a very simple way. Okay, um, awesome. So let's get started with with creating the structure. In a way, we're already started a little bit. We've already got some kind of relationship like this going, right? With with enemies to dragons. Okay, but let's explore this a little bit more. Okay, um, let me also maybe tell you where this is in your textbook. In case you want to take notes. 
I also really don't like the way the book explains interfaces. Um, if, if you can even call it explaining interfaces. Um, the, the explanation from the book is basically the bottom of page 56. Um, if you're going to try to understand interfaces from that, good luck. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's maybe focus more on the lecture than the book. Um, cool. So how are we going to do this? Um, it's, it's actually very simple to create our interface, our enemy interface. All we're going to do is remove abstract class. So remember what I said, right? Interfaces, if, if you're comfortable thinking about it in this way, you can kind of think of it like a class, except everything is abstract and also public. Okay. So if I just say interface enemy, it's in a way very similar to saying um, abstract class enemy. Okay, I now no longer need to say these things are public, okay, because everything is public. Okay, I no longer need to say my attack method is abstract because everything's abstract. So it's just void attack now. And bam, interface enemy. But what is our special rule? Um, again, you don't have to do this, but it's good practice um, so that people understand what you're doing. Your, your interfaces have, have a little I in front of them, a capital I in front of them. Okay, so I enemy. Okay, dragon is just going to inherit from I enemy. All right. Okay, I think it will still ex um, complain here because now name is also abstract. Okay, yeah, so dragon is going to have to implement, implement name. Hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, the, the Bryanston kids also found out how to do this. I think they disappear after a little while, right? You can do it if you want to circle parts of the screen that you want to question or something. Does it disappear? Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, public string uh, name gets set. Um, dragon dot attack no suitable method found. Ooh, oh right, uh, it's no longer override because um, yeah. Okay, cool. So now our structure is working again. It's basically identical to what we had before. Like I explained this whole dragon. Oh no, no, it's no problem, Amoka. Um, I I explained this whole dragon enemy relationship. It's just the only thing that's changed now is enemies are now an interface. All right, it's doing the exact same thing. Okay, but. Ooh, what some powerful things that this allows us to do. I don't know if I want to tell you this now. Um, I think Tanya would appreciate it because she asked this question last time. Interfaces allow for multiple inheritance. Okay. Um, but basically what I'll say instead of saying something that specific, what I'll say is interfaces, because they are more abstract, are more relaxed in a way you can do much more crazy things with them. And, and you'll see what I mean by that before, before the end of the lecture. Okay, so we've already, we've already got this relationship between enemies and dragons, okay? Although we did say that our, our enemies are going to be even simpler than this. Our enemies aren't even going to attack, okay? Our, although, I mean, we can just leave it, I guess. Yeah, let's, let's leave it. Okay. Um, because it, it is this powerful that actually it's it's super easy to adjust to the fact that enemies can attack. So we are just going to make them attack. Um, all right. What other enemy did we want to define? We want to define goblins, right? So while we're here, let's just define some goblins. Okay, class goblin equal um, class. Ooh, yeah, class goblin inherits from I enemy. Okay, renemy good stuff enemy okay and it's going to be very similar to our dragon class really we need to because this is now abstract string name we now do have to implement um, our full property name here so we have to say public string name but i want you already to start appreciating what the interface is forcing me to do right the interface makes it very easy for me to create a new enemy but it also says it it tells me what's mandatory okay so like if you're an enemy you have to have an attack method and you have to have a name property
okay? It's defining a template for creating enemy classes. Okay, so now I've got public string name, all right? So my goblins will now have names. I'm obviously gonna add a constructor for my goblins. So just goblin, um, and we're just gonna set their name to like name equals goblin. Ooh, yeah, we should have a break. Good point. Let, um, let me just... I'm going to finish defining our goblin class and then and then we can take a break. Okay. We also did start a little bit late though, so... Um, but we can... Yeah, we'll have a break when I finish defining the class. Because we just need to define one more thing, right? It's mandatory that we define how goblins attack. I'm literally just going to copy-paste the attack method from dragons. Right there. And we just... Goblins don't breathe fire, right? So we can say um, name bites you or something. Okay, goblins don't bite either, but I want to like a clear difference. Okay, do goblins bite? I don't know, I assume they bite, right? Okay, cool. So um, that's it. That's all our enemies are already defined. Stabs you. Okay, yeah, stabs you. Good stuff. Okay, cool. So we've got goblins, we've got dragons, we've got our enemy interface. When we come back, we'll create our weapon interface. And what we're going to see is we're going to make all weapons able to attack all enemies. All right. And we're going to do it in a super easy way that hopefully you guys will, will appreciate. Okay. Awesome. I'll leave the code on the screen. I'm going to go get myself some water. And let's say we're taking a nine-ish minute break we'll start again at quarter past four and um, quarter two four i mean quarter two four now don't come back pretending that you heard me say quarter past four and that you're late um so yeah i'll, I'll even type it Fifteen forty-five. we start again okay if you guys have any questions you can post them during the break and i'll answer them when i get back
This is a bad. Sir, can you please scroll down a bit? Oh, I want to get the hospital. Oh, cool. Cool. Is everyone back? Shall we get started again? Post in the chat that you're here. Um, seats. Right? Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's get started again. I don't know if we're going to have time to try breakout rooms, which isn't good because I. I they're insisting that we use breakout rooms, which is cool. I mean, they might work really nicely. I don't know. Because um, it forces you guys to interact with each other rather than through chat or through me or whatever. Okay, cool. So hopefully you guys remember we've created this example. We have an interface called iEnemy. It says that if you implement this interface, you have to have a name and you have to be able to attack. Okay. So we created two, two classes that implement our iEnemy interface, okay? Um, obviously, they both had to have this name property. We gave them a constructor. This isn't mandatory, but we just did, okay? Um, and that will just set their name. It sets our dragon's name to Alduin and our goblin's name to Goblin. If we wanted to be able to set custom names, we could add that by just saying like string name and then typing name here, right? And then you would have to specify your dragon when your dragon's name when you create the dragon object. You guys know how constructors work by now. Um, and yeah, so we have that constructor, and then obviously both of them have their their little attack method that they have to implement. Okay, and it's not super complicated. We just made them print out different things. But hopefully you can picture. You could make this much more complicated than it is, right? Like here, you could you know, specify a certain integer for the amount of damage a dragon would do with their attack, right? Um, same thing for goblins. And because they're totally separate methods, um, you, you can make them do totally different things, 
But what's powerful about having the interface is that this guarantees that if you're an eye enemy, you have a way to attack, right? Like the specifics are irrelevant, but you have a way, right? So it's creating a guarantee, almost like a contract, right? So if you, if you, have, if you are an eye enemy, you must be able to attack. Okay, so um, cool. We've, we've sort of done this little bit of the example here, right? Where we've created an eye enemy and we've got our like things inheriting correctly. We now want to go ahead and create our eye weapon interface. This one's going to be slightly more complicated, right? Because we want to define this relationship between weapons and enemies, right? We want to be, make our weapons be able to attack enemies. But hopefully what you're going to see is that this is surprisingly easy to do with interfaces. Okay, so how we're going to do it is we'll first create our interface. Okay, interface I weapon. All right, sticking to um, our good naming convention, interfaces always start with this capital I. Okay, interface I weapon. Okay, and then we've got our two little curly brackets defining the body of our interface. Okay. Um, all right. Um, what what are our what are our weapons gonna have? I think probably also a name, right? You want to be able to define them as like bow and sword, and you want to be able to get that in the code. So let's give it a name property with its getters and setters. Okay, and we're going to give it also attack okay void attack yeah what's up yeah in in name um because you are, are you asking why are you asking are you asking because it's it's public um like what level are you asking at it's it's allowing me to get the name so like access read and write to the name variable but i'm wondering if you're asking because because they're public um oh okay cool then then yeah it's just so that i can i can um yeah get and set the name right so it gives me read write access to our name property okay if if what you're maybe wondering is why can't I just do this? Um, we, we can see that. So actually now might be a good time to explain it since someone is asking in the class, we can go more in detail about what the difference is here. So you can see when I try to make it string name, um, C sharp tells me interfaces cannot contain fields. Okay, but you'll see if I give this, if I go ahead and give this getters and setters, doop, doop, then C sharp no longer sees this as a field, it sees it as a property. Okay, oops, I put a semicolon afterwards. That's just a mistake in typing. Um, it no longer sees it as a field, it now sees it as a property, and so our code now works. Okay, so what um, the, the difference here is, it's almost def um, like a, a difference in definition in a way. Okay, so so if you just defining a field, um, it's like, I, I'm just gonna define it this way. C-sharp doesn't necessarily see it that way, but, but this is a better way to think about it, I think. Um, if, if you define a property without getters and setters, then C-sharp sees that as a field, okay? And, and the reason that's a problem is because if that field was private, you would have no way to access it or set it. Okay, from outside the class. So with interfaces, we always just want properties because them having getters and setters guarantees that they are editable and readable. I mean, yeah, re readable and writable. Okay, so editable and seeable, if you like. Gettable and settable. <laughs> okay, so we always want them to be properties because that guarantees that we're able to read and write them, basically. Okay, so like the getter allows us to get its value, the setter allows us to set its value. All right, does that answer your question? Um, should you want to go more in detail on getters and setters again? It's... Uh, I'm fine for now, thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, it, it might come up in, in some of the, the, in the quiz that we do, and so if, if you're not perfectly comfortable with it, we can 
we will see it more then. Okay. Um, and the main thing is really be able to answer what getters and setters are doing, right? Like getters are getting the value, setters are setting the value. That's what you must remember. Um, okay. Cool. So we've got our interface i weapon. We've given it its property, right? Name with its getters and setters so that it's accessible and changeable. And we've got void attack. Okay. The weapon attack method is a little bit different though, right? So, so the enemy attack method didn't have to take anything in, right? It's just attacking you, right? We just make it print out you, but there's only one of you playing the game. So we didn't need to specify anything in more detail. Weapons though are slightly different, right? Weapons need to attack enemies. Okay, so I wanna see if anyone can guess my attack method, what parameter is it going to take in? Or at least tell me what type of thing is our attack method going to take in? Can someone tell me that in the chat? What type? What does our attack method for our weapons need? Hmm. I want to see it it will be it might be a difficult leap but i do want to see if if we can like put put it together hmm and let me ask you this what will our weapons be attacking what will our weapons be attacking if we i enemy yes exactly Good job guys okay so so it's gonna take in a thing of type i enemy okay now this is why I, I want you to start seeing why this could be so powerful like picture you as a game developer i mean you know modern games have a ridiculous number of things that you can attack right like even buildings right static objects you can shoot buildings and and all of these different things and it's always slightly different right it's always the same idea you're attacking it with some weapon but the the attack animation and what happens when you hit that particular object always changes so i start i want you to start thinking in that kind of I, space you know so our attack method is going to take in something of type i enemy and we're just going to call it like enemy or something all right or let's to be more specific this is our target okay the target of our attack i enemy target okay and it's quite cool that this is actually going to work because <laughs> um, this is like quite a powerful idea, right? Because now it doesn't matter if what I'm targeting is a dragon or a goblin, right? And it doesn't matter what weapon I'm targeting it with. It will always be able to connect the two. Okay, but, but let's see it in practice. Um, let me make it full screen again because it might be a bit easier to see. All right, so um, what else do we have to... Can't this be full screen again? That's a bit better and... Okay, so... Cool, we've we've kind of got um, the, the overall structure down now, right? We've created our I weapons and, and what we're working on now is mainly defining this relationship here and defining our bow and sword. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our bow and sword classes and see how this is actually going to work. All right, so we've got our interface I weapon. Now what we have to do is um, go class. Okay, let's create our bow. All right, bow I weapon. Okay, pretty simple. Exactly how we created our dragon pretty much. In fact, um, no, no, okay, let's not copy because it's we, we want to actually understand each step. Okay, so um, again, our iWeapon interface says we need to define a name and a method called attack. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to create a constructor so that we'll automatically set name to bow inside our bow class. All right, so I'm going to make public string name, um, add the getters and setters so that we can see it and change it. Okay, um, we're going to um, create our constructor public bow. Okay. 
It's not going to have to take anything in. All of our bows are going to have the same name. They're all just going to be name equals bow. All right. But what I want you guys to see is that you could, you very well could take in a name here and, and do a lot more customization for each of your bows, right? Cool. So, and now we need to define our attack method. Okay. And it's, it's super simple. We just say public void attack. All right. The difference now is that our, our attack method here needs to take in an I enemy targets okay all right cool and now we can just define what how how we attack with a bow all right um i i think with a bow we'll say something like um shoot uh now start seeing what we've got here we've got a target targets are i enemies and all i enemies have names so in these curly brackets i can say target dot name okay so now it won't just say oh it's not just a general thing i do have this target if i'm shooting um my dragon it's gonna say shoots elduin with arrow with arrow with an arrow we'll say okay something like that yeah. shoot target dot name with an arrow okay we we also want to define our sword i'm just gonna literally because it's so similar we can go ahead and copy bow so i just copy pasted that code um class bow and this one's just going to be class sword, inheriting from I weapon. The constructor obviously needs to become sword. The name of our swords is going to be sword. Okay. And our attack will be pretty much the same, except we're going to say hit target.name with a sword. Okay. Oh, oh and exclamation points need to have some dramatic effect okay so we've now defined two weapons as well cool so um maybe we've outlined a little game here um so let's let's actually try to play it and make sure that all our code is working okay <laughs> um we we did i i, I imagine Perhaps there's a simpler way to explain it than this, but I thought this was a more fun way. And if you're studying the code yourself, maybe this could be quite cool because you could create a full text interface like this, right? And hopefully you can start picturing how to do that. Um, a lot of these a lot of games are made like this actually, and it's they can be quite fun. Um, there's sites for. Okay. Cool. So um, let's try it with a simple example first, and then I'm going to show you how you can use these interfaces to create more powerful more powerful examples okay so we've got dragon enemy equals new dragon i'm also going to create a weapon let's i i'm going to be a ranger so i'm going to create a bow all right bow bow equals new bow okay something like that all right so um Elderwin's going to attack me actually actually yeah yeah Elderwin's going to attack me and then I am going to shoot Elduin with my bow. And how I'll do that is I'll say bow, so my bow object, okay? We know bow is an eye weapon, okay? So it's guaranteed it has an attack and that attack needs a target, okay? So I need to say bow.attack and then I need to give it my target. Who's my target? It's enemy, right? The enemy object, I just give it that. Okay, now some of you might be wondering, like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, if you've forgotten, um, that dragon, enemy is of type dragon. So how can I specify it's in attack when attack is ex expecting an I enemy? Do you guys remember that, what that word is? 
when we were learning about inheritance, we went, f we took this word is, and we could say things like, we could give it a polygon object or a rectangle object and say is polygon. And it would return true, if you remember that. So likewise here, if I say enemy is I enemy, this will return true. C sharp sees dragons as I enemies, okay? Which allows you to do very cool things. Because if I want to change my enemy to a goblin, all I have to do is, is get, create a new object and I'll just pass it goblin. Okay, and that'll work. Okay, but let's make sure that our current code doesn't have any errors before we start exploring those other ideas. Okay. Look at that. So it says, Alduin breathes fire at you. And then we go, shoot Alduin with an arrow. Okay, let's say I want to be like a warrior instead. So I want to use a sword. I can create sword um, sword equals new sword, right? And now I can just say um, sword dot attack enemy. Okay, and bam! Now Elduin breathes fire at you, and then I hit Elduin with a sword. Okay, and likewise we can change our enemy, right? Dragon enemy equals new dragon. Okay, um, we can now just say goblin enemy equals new goblin. And now our game has changed completely. I'm now not hitting Elduin with a sword and Elduin's not breathing fire at me. Instead, now it says the goblin stabs you and then hit goblin with a sword. Okay. And this is very much, I, I don't know, I, you guys might be too, some of you might be too young, but they were... Actually, no, these Pokemon games are new as well, right? Like when you, when these Pokemon go, po Pokemon games go like Pikachu uses whatever and it's super effective. That's all implemented with interfaces. Okay. And you can see exactly how you would do that in, in this example. Okay. All right. So that's the comp, the main concepts of interfaces. All right. That's the main concept of interfaces. And hopefully you can start to see, like, I, I do hope that even some of you do do it. How long would it take to make a simple text-based adventure game? Um, it really depends how much effort you put into it, right? Like, I don't know if you've heard of Undertale. That would have taken forever, um, but it wasn't fully text-based, obviously, and they had a lot of music and stuff. Um, my, my one friend is working on a project where you... Where, he's like making a computer play like this text-based story game like a bot for it and and they've got some customizable um like csv files similar to excel spreadsheets and and you can very easily um expand those simple excel spreadsheets into very very interesting stories actually but like hopefully you can see how you, we're we're getting pretty close right you could create a simple choice mechanism here in fact actually since you guys seem to be enjoying it and we probably i did prepare this whole quiz um but because of our early problems with um because of our early problems with zoom we won't be able to get to the quiz and trying out um the breakout rooms and stuff but we'll do that next week um so maybe in the last 24 minutes we can expand out our game a little bit Okay, so I can show you how you might do this more cleverly. Cleverly, yeah, cleverly. Wow, okay, weird words. Okay, but yeah, let's let's see how um, we would we would use these things more in a more interesting way. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I'll I'll ask on the WhatsApp group what the general consensus is. Um, but but actually yeah you i would expect you to be the only one who wouldn't want to use zoom next week ethan because of the trouble in joining us but if you're digging it then yeah 100 percent we can um yeah it would be you and keaton i would expect would have trouble problems with using zoom again but everyone else i don't know um but yeah if what does everyone think shall we stick to zoom um and actually, yeah, um, we must use Zoom again because the breakout rooms, the breakout rooms. Um, we, we have to try breakout rooms and polling and all of these, you know, more clever ways of 
doing online learning and stuff. <laughs> Alex is like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you're just a bit outvoted, Alex. Democracy sucks. Okay, but cool. Let's let's expand out our game a little bit because yeah, there's two more concepts that we can introduce quickly. There's one special interface that iComparable has. I mean that C# -sharp has. It's called iComparable and we're going to we're going to use that and we're going to the probability of two man arriving increases. And we're also going to hmm yeah, let's expand out the game a little bit first. So how would we do this? In, in the real world, we wouldn't be creating sword objects like this. Okay, we wouldn't be saying sword sword equals new sword. This would take forever. Instead, and then, and then like bow bow equals new bow. This would take forever with all of the different weapons you have in a, in a game. Okay, so what you would do instead is create a list. Okay, now guys, bearing in mind that attack took in an I enemy. If I wanted a list of weapons, okay, so I want one array, one collection that contains both bows and swords, what will my list, what type will my list be? What type will my list be? Remember with lists, we can give a type and then like a, a little square brackets like that. What type will my list be if I want a list of weapons? We will use console.readline to make some choices. Yeah, it'll be an array, but what, what type will my array hold? What type will my array hold? I want a list of weapons. Strings. Hmm. Hmm, strings. Amoka raises hand. Okay. There'll be objects, yeah. Um, hmm. So, so our attack took in an I enemy. I, you're, okay, I'm, I'm going to show you. Hopefully it's mind-blowing then. Okay. I, weapon. Okay. It's literally just a list of weapons. Now, because it's abstract, C-sharp is actually totally okay with this. Okay. So now I can say I, weapon, weapons, or like arsenal or whatever you want to call it, equals... And I can now just specify a list of weapons. I'm going to say new bow and new sword. Okay. Cool. So we've now got a list of weapons. Um, now, hopefully you can see we could also give a list of enemies. Right? I can say I enemy. Enemies. Equals new dragon new goblin okay quite cool now if you wanted to add another weapon like a gun it would be super easy to do right you would easily be able to integrate that into the game okay now we can say all right um we've got our eye weapons we've got eye enemies um, let's let's actually try to use this. Let's make sure that that I'm not lying to you and that this works. So we can say weapons in position zero dot attack enemies in position one. Okay, and so hopefully we're gonna shoot a goblin with a bow. Okay, hopefully we'll be shooting a goblin with a bow. Assuming I didn't type anything incorrectly. Shoot goblin with an arrow. All right, pretty cool. And now if I want to pick a new weapon, I can say instead of using my bow, I'm going to use a sword. So now we're going to hit goblin with a sword. And we can say enemies in position zero. That's new dragon. So now we'll be hitting Elduin with a sword. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, also, Ethan brought it up a little bit earlier in the chat. With console.readline, we can we can ask for user input, right? We can ask for user input. So what if I say int weapon choice? Okay, we're, we're taking this game example a little bit too far, because but this will show you maybe uh, um, you guys try, if, if you're interested, try adding another weapon or another enemy to the game after 
after I finish this little bit, okay? So we can say int weapon choice equals, um, we're gonna have to convert it to an int, unfortunately, because nothing is ever as simple as just reading in, but whatever, console.readline, okay? Console.readline. So now that's gonna read, it's gonna request an integer, right? It is a very detailed example, but hope, remember you'll have all access to all of this code when the lecture is done. So hopefully it will serve you well for a while, right? Like um, if, if you're ever wanting to revise this or perhaps make your own text-based adventure game, maybe you can refer to this, okay? So we've got int weapon choice, we're reading in something, and now I'll put weapon choice here. 2 in 32. So that's just converting it to an integer. Does it does anyone remember what that 32 represents? We have discussed it before. What is what is that 32 there for? Why is it 2 in 32 and not 2 int? How many bits does an integer take? Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. 32 bits. Exactly. Okay, so, so it's just saying convert.toInt, you can read it almost in English. So that's converting. So console.readLine reads in a string, right? So convert.toInt32 just converts that string to an int so that I can save it in my int weapon choice. Okay, so now when I run this, um, I, I haven't actually tried input with user input with Rex tester, but hopefully it works. Now, when I run this, ooh, process killed because it exceeded given resources, sheesh. Okay, this does work in .NET Fiddle. It seems like we can't, we're not allowed in Rex Tester. That's unfortunate. Oh wait, can I type though? What if I type two? Hmm. Ah, oh, Rex Tester doesn't allow user input. Oh, show input, there we go, okay. Ah, there we go, okay, so it does work. All right, sorry about that. There we go. So you see, you can type in what you want to input here now. So I input zero. When I run this, it goes shoot Elderwin with an arrow. If I input one, then it goes um, hit Elderwin with a sword. All right. And likewise, I'll just add it so that you guys can play with it a bit. Um, if we say enemy choice equals convert dot two and 32. So that's just converting our string to an integer. Um, because obviously the computer is very sensitive about type, right? It really needs the correct types to be in the correct place. So I'll say one zero, all right? And enemy choice, enemy choice. Okay, so one zero, um, that'll be hit Alduin with a sword. If I say zero one, um, that'll be shoot goblin with a bow. Okay. And you could see how you could create like a pretty pretty complicated sequence of steps with like pretty simple read writes. And this is pretty much like with interfaces, this is how you would do this professionally if you were trying to create a like a text-based adventure game. Okay, cool. I think let's put this example to bed. I'm gonna save this and I'll share it in chat so that save it. Um, V very, very detailed interface example. But interfaces are just very cool. So it was worth spending some time on them. Like it is pretty much the whole point of this whole object oriented programming thing. Um, everyone can see only me can edit, awesome. So you will have to copy this if you, if you wanna use the code yourself. So just copy it into your own Rex tester or into Visual Studio or, where, or wherever, right? Anything that compiles C Sharp will run it, but, but there's the code. Cool, so in the last 13 minutes, I'm gonna show you a special interface that C Sharp has, okay? That's, that is quite interesting as well. Mm. Hmm. Run code. Okay. So yeah, a special interface.
Okay, so um, how should we how should we do this one? Okay, we're going to create a class person. All right. Actually, no, dragons are more fun. Let's create a class dragon. Okay, class dragon. And our dragon is going to have hit points. Okay, int hit points equals, or no, 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 let's make it more clear. Level, int level equals new, or no, int level, sorry, what am I doing? Public int level. So it's going to have a level property, all right? So like the level of, level of the dragon. I mean like an RPG kind of level. Okay, like uh, level 100, level 20, whatever, something like that. Okay, so our dragon has a level sort of representing how powerful it is. Now you could picture that in a game, you might want to be able to find out like which dragon has the highest level or the most hit points or the strongest fire or something like that. Okay, or which weapons are the strongest. You want like a list of weapons. But if you have like, for example, a list of dragons, how can I sort that list? Like with integers, we know how, right? Like if I have int x equals six and int y equals seven, in the code, I can find out which one is larger by saying like x greater than y, right? If this is true, then I know x is the larger integer, okay? But if I have like dragon x equals new dragon, right? and dragon y equals new dragon. How would I compare dragons with one another? Okay. Well, the answer is that there is an interface in C sharp um, that can do this for you. Okay, it, it can allow you to define a way to compare objects, okay, any objects. All right, so if you have like a level, a name, um, a number of hit points, anything like that. You can compare two objects. An area, right, like a method that calculates some number, you could compare it on that basis, anything like that, okay? There is an interface that allows you to do this, okay? So let's just make a constructor so that we can set the levels of our dragons, like public dragon, Okay, obviously to set the level, we're gonna to want to take in one parameter, right? What, 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 what type will that parameter be? We wanna set the level of our dragon inside the constructor. What type do we need? Anyone, anyone know what type our level is? Ooh, we should make a capital L, hey. To show that it's a property properly. Does no one know? Int level. Okay, and then we will say level equals level. All right. So um, we now define our dragon's level, and we can define it so it's like seventy, a hundred. Okay, so we've got a level seventy dragon X and a level one hundred dragon Y. Okay. Now, how we say that we want to compare to, um, we want to be able to compare different dragons is we say we inherit from a particular interface called the iComparable interface, okay? And we tell it what it's comparing in, in like little arrows like this. We'll say this is comparing dragons. Okay, it's comparing dragons. And all the iComparable interface has in it is a one method called compare to, all right? So it means that you now have to define a method called compare to, and it's gonna have to take in, in this case, something of type dragon. All right, so all this is doing is it's an interface that allows us to compare different objects. And you could use it with anything. Maybe you could picture if I said I comparable rectangle, then this would just take in a rectangle. <clears throat> okay, I comparable person, then it would just take in a person, right? And you could order people by 
by like heights, by alphabetically, by name, by whatever you wanted, right? By weights, those were the only things that our person class had, but you could do it with anything hypothetically. And all this class has to do is define an order. It has, you have to tell it how to compare these two objects, all right? There is a standard way of doing it, although you don't have to do it this way. Um, but if you want to use C-sharp's built-in stuff, then you have to. Okay, so we've just got a like a, a three, three option if statement. Okay, three option if statement. The first one will just say if level, so like the level of this dragon is less than um, the other dragon's level, then return minus one. Okay, if they're equal, okay, then return zero. And in all other cases, just return one. Okay, um, I'll briefly discuss what this means, but in the quiz, we'll see more detailed examples of this and then we can actually discuss it because it's a little bit abstract. But what this would be able to do now is if I say x dot compare to compare to y, okay, so compare dragon x to com to dragon y, okay, compare dragon x to dragon y. You'll see now it'll be able to handle a bunch of different cases. Okay, so it returns minus one now because dragon x's level is lower than dragon y's okay if i made dragon x's level higher like 110 then it would return one and if i made them equal it would return zero so what this allows me to do is define really complicated ways to compare objects all right might seem a little bit abstract now but maybe when you see some like rectangle examples and some examples of other classes doing this um, then, then you'll become more familiar with the idea. All right, I hope that's cool. Um, hmm, you know, we are ending a little bit early, but we did cover interfaces, so that's good. Um, and that is interfaces is the last topic of of. Let me also just save this. Of section two. Crawford dash i compare okay there's there's the crawford the the i comparable code as well but i'll share them both on the whatsapp group too uh, let me stop sharing um when we go through the quiz it would have been today but unfortunately because of the zoom thing um we we can't because of the problems at the beginning. Uh, wait, why? This is weird. It won't allow me to stop sharing my screen. Something is going on strangely here. Oh, well. I guess, I mean, we'll. I'll just end the meeting eventually. But yeah, um, cool guys. Oh, we can't see your screen anymore. Okay, so I guess it did stop on my screen it still looks like it's sharing i don't know why um oh okay cool well that's probably better i guess because that means my screen has stopped sharing just not on my screen wait can i go back to meeting or something uh how would i get back to meeting invites chat okay i'll just end and then it would stop okay cool all right. Well, bye bye, everyone. Um, that that covers it for today. I won't I won't keep you here for longer. Why is your username different to other times? Um, because I'm on one of the managers of of Brighter Futures accounts because they don't have an organization account yet. Uh, no problem. Yeah, you too. In, enjoy making your your text based adventure games. <laughs> cool. Uh, thank you. Sir. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. You too. 
Um, cool. Cheers, everybody.